Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Ark, The Lost Colony, the new DLC. We're going to start by optimizing Windows, and after that we're going to take a look on your Radian and Nvidia parameter. And at the end we will go inside of the game. So now for Windows, we're going to start by writing settings. And we're going to go to the settings of Windows 11. We're gonna start by gaming over there. So the first one is game bar. This one I really recommend to deactivate it. It's causing issue and also you're losing some FPS with it. Except if you have a Ryzen uh, CPU, the 7900X 3D or the 7950X 3D, they're using uh, the game bar uh, to prioritize your CCD when you're playing video games. So super important to use that if you have those processor. If you have any other processor, just deactivate it. After that, we're going to go to graphic. We're going to change default graphic setting over there. Make sure that your hardware accelerated GPU scheduling is at on. Super important to do that. We're going to go to gaming again. Capture, capture. Make sure that everything is deactivated like this. So uh, you want to save all your resources. And the last one is game mode. Now game mode, honestly, is really, really good. Back then with Windows 10, it was a bit sketchy and a lot of like stuttering issue. But now you really need to using it uh, to make sure that all your resources are pri prioritizing your video games. Another thing that I recommend, we're going to go to system is your power. Uh, back then, uh, we were recommending to use the best performance, but now, honestly, just use balance. You will have better boost clock, longer boost clock. Uh, I did a couple of benchmark balance versus per best performance, and honestly, I'm getting better result with balance. So super important to do that. Another thing I want to mention is some recommendations. So make sure that your uh, XMP profile is activated if you have it on your BIOS. Super important. Make sure that you download the latest uh, chipset driver for your CPU if you have an AMD or Intel. Also, make sure that you update your BIOS to make sure that you have all the latest updates from your uh, CPU or your uh, uh, motherboard provider. Make sure that you have your Windows update up to date. And the last one is also make sure that you have the latest driver from your GPU. So if you have an NVIDIA card, Radeon or Intel, super important. They always push new update and they optimize a lot of stuff in it. So now for NVIDIA. So first of all, make sure that you have the latest version of your NVIDIA app and driver. As you can see, the LSS4 is compatible with Arc Lost Colony. After that, we're going to go to the graphics section in the global setting. We want to apply, first of all, the DLSS override for all the, the different models. So make sure that you have latest for frame generation, rear reconstruction, and super resolution. So you're going to always make sure that those ones will be the latest version on all those compatible game. And Arc is compatible uh, with this feature. Low latency recommend to go with on. If you want to lock your FPS, this is pretty much where you're going to do it. And shader cache size. Uh, if you install a lot of different games, I recommend to go with 10 gig or 100 gig if you have the space on your disk. If you're going default, the default is only 5 gig. So that's you will always reconstruct your shader cache size. So I don't recommend to use that one if you install a lot of games. After that, in system, if you want to activate your G-Sync, this is pretty much where you're going to do it. And you will select the proper screen. Really important to go with native resolution, as you can see over there, and the IS refresh rate compatible to your monitor. And in the color section, make sure that you're using your 10-bit color if you have an HDR monitor and it's compatible with the full dynamic range. If not, by default, this will be at 8-bit. And for digital vibrance, I like to put 5% more, a little bit more saturation in my color. The games look less great with it. One more thing in performance tab, I like to put my power maximum at 133, so the maximum. Uh, I'm going to send a little bit more wattage to my video card, so I'm going to get like longer boost clock can expect five to seven percent boost in your fps but the thing is you need room on your gpu so if you have already bad thermals it doesn't change anything so just stay at 100 uh, it's just the uh, nvidia the algorithm nvidia will look at your power maximum and can put some longer boost clock to your gpu so this is pretty much it for nvidia now let's go with radian so now for radian card we're gonna go to settings display first Make sure that you're using your free sync. If you have a monitor compatible with it, you're going to make sure that you're going to synchronize your GPU with your monitor. So really important to use that. 
After that, we're going to go to gaming in the graphics section. Make sure that you're using the custom profile, so don't use those presets over there. Make sure that you're selecting your GPU. In my case, it's a 9070 XT. Don't use your integrate GPU. It can be tricky if you're playing on a laptop or even a desktop like me that has an integrate GPU. After that, the first one that you will need to look at is your uh, FSR 4 that you can force in some game that it's uh, using FSR 3. This one, uh, it's not necessarily everybody will have it. It really depends if your card is compatible with it. So definitely enable it if you have it. Also, I want to mention if you're playing in a game that uh, doesn't have FSR, doesn't have frame generation and you're struggling with your FPS, fluid motion frame can be a nice uh, option over there. You activate it, you're going to get like 30 to 30% boost. It will add input lag, so don't use that if you're playing a competitive game, but this one can help with an uh, older game. Uh, don't use anti-lag one. This one is not good. Don't use a radiant boost. Radiant chill, I really recommend to use it. And I will explain you why. So for an example, in my case right now, I have a 170 Hertz monitor. And to stay in your free sync range, you need to be, uh, you need to produce less than 170 FPS. So my recommendation is take your amount of Hertz on your uh, monitor. In my case, it's 170. Do minus three and lock your FPS at 167. You can do the same thing if you have a 240 Hertz monitor. Go with 30, uh, 237. Uh, so you're always going to make sure that you stay in your free sync range. It's better for uh, the fluidity of your image. And also, really important, if you want less input lag, you need to make sure that your GPU is not at 100% utilization. So uh, 98, 97, something like that. So sometimes it's good to just lock your FPS. Again, it depends on the game. Maybe in some game, 160 F 67 FPS will be 100% uh, utilization for me. So you can go maybe a little bit lower. You can also do it per game. Right now in the graphics section, I'm doing it for all my games on my computer. But sometimes, I don't know, you're playing the new Assassin's Creed. Just go to Assassin's Creed and you can lock your FPS over there if you want. So really important to do that for your uh, utilization, but also to make sure that you're staying in your free sync range. Another thing that I want to mention, image sharpening too can be nice if you don't add FSR in game or a sharpness a slider. Uh, so if you're playing an old game or a game that just have like TAA and the game is very blurry, activate this and move your slider between something 60 to 70% depending on your preference. And it will really help to have a better image quality. Last thing that I want to mention, if you have some random stuttering and you don't know why, this option at the end can be really nice. It resets your shader cache, so you just perform a reset. And after that, when you will reopen your game, it will just rebuild your shader. Sometimes it can take time, so don't go too crazy if your game is lagging, but uh, it can help. I, I saw a lot of person uh, having this issue with Call of Duty, so this one can really help you. So this is pretty much it, guys. Make sure that you have the latest uh, version of your driver, and I also have a dedicated drive on uh, how to overclock your GPU. For me, it gives me 12% boost in my FPS without too much effort, so you can definitely look at my guide. So now let's go in the game. So now inside of the game. So first of all, for the resolution, make sure that you're playing native over there. Window mode, I recommend full screen or the window full screen one. If you want to lock your FPS, this is pretty much what you're going to do it and just put the amount that you need. Now with the upscaling. So you have two real options, honestly. If you have an RTX card, for sure go with DLSS. It's even compatible with DLSS 4. I recommend to go with quality. You can expect 10% boost. If you need more FPS, you can definitely go with balance and if you're playing in 2K or 4K. At 1080p, the game can look a little bit blurry. After that, you have frame generation. I recommend to go with DLSS if you have a 4000 or 5000 series. If you don't have that, you can run DLSS with FSR. Uh, so if you have like a 2060, 2070, something like that, 3060 and you're struggling, definitely frame gen can help you, but you will feel a little bit of an input lag in this game with frame generation. If you have a Radeon card or um, an NVIDIA card not compatible with DLSS, go with FSR at quality. And again, you can use the frame generation at FSR if you want. I don't recommend to go lower than quality, honestly, with FSR because the game looks too blurry with it. So we're going to get back here in DLSS. I'm not using VSync to add more input lag in the game. So that's why I'm putting it at off. 
For the graphic section, first of all, view distance, I recommend to go with medium. It's a good compromise. You're going to save like 6% in your FPS. And honestly, you will see a lot further in front of you. So it can be useful to when you're playing Arc. Texture, if you have 8 gig and more of VRAM on your GPU, go epic. 6 gig high, 4 gig medium, less than 4 gig, go with low. After that, all those parameters over there, reflection, post-process, general shadows, uh, global illumination, and effect quality, I recommend to go with low. You can expect 25% boost over there. Those ones are really important. And if you want immersion and a good image quality, I recommend to go medium high for general shadow and global illumination. It will, the game will look less flat, so it really depends what is your goal. Do you want pure performance or you want some uh, decent uh, graphic in your game? Foliage quality can run medium or high. It's like 1% to 2% for each bracket, so not a huge deal over there. I recommend to deactivate all those parameters over there. You can expect 6% boost and also really important the motion blur. The game looks very blurry with it. I'm not a big fan of it, so that's why I'm going with that. All those multiplier over there, just stay at 1. If you're still struggling with your FPS, put 0.9 or 0.8. It can help a little bit. Enable footstep particle, I recommend to go with off. Enable footstep decal, this one can stay at on, and those parameters over there go off 0.5 and off to reduce resolution in inventory. So this is pretty much it, guys, for my ARC, uh, the Lost Colony uh, guide. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rigs, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.